Hey, this is Megan Rapino, and I'm Sue Bird. We've decided to turn our crazy IG live show into a podcast for your listening pleasure. Enjoy the show. A touch, touch more. New episodes of A Touch More drop Tuesday only on the Blue Wire Podcast Network. Be sure to subscribe to the show on Spotify, Apple, or anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Welcome to episode 86 of the Tennis Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Amell. I'm Brandon, and I have i didn't realize it was 86. I've lost count. You just gave me a hard time last time when I said that we were on our record-breaking, globally universally recognized episode 85. Yeah. Remember? Well, I didn't remember that. How soon we forget? I guess I thought we were in the high 70s. We're not. We're not. It's 86. We're closer to 100, our big 100 <laughs> celebration that I just made up. Yeah, I already got some streamers, balloons on rush order. Brandon, what did you do during your extended vacation from the Tennis Podcast the last two weeks? The same shit I've been doing. What new hobbies did you take up? What new projects around the house did you finish up? I've done, done the same shit I've done for the last eight weeks. Yep. Yell at my family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I did. I did uh, pick up, I wouldn't call this a hobby, I ordered two model kits off of eBay and there are model kits that I guess haven't been made in several years. Now, something to be wary of is that if you order an opened model kit and even one teeny tiny little piece is missing, you have wasted all of your time and money. What is the model? What are they models? I ordered of? one Batmobile, like the 1989 Batmobile. It had been open before, uh, but it said all the pieces were there. So I got to work with gluing and snapping stuff together. And, and then I found out... You sucker. And I found out one of the important taillight pieces was missing. And I don't... You've been had. I don't be, want to be one of those little whiny bitches that's like, I'm going to... Too late. I'm going to ding you on eBay and leave you a bad review or whine to you that you need to replace it. No. I knew I was taking a risk. Keep in mind, both things can be true. You can not leave a review and ding that person on eBay, and you can <laughs> still, still be also bitch. be a whiny bitch. Well, yeah, yeah. I wasn't. A, then I wasn't a whiny bitch to the <laughs> to the eBayer who who uh, faithfully no. sold me a Batmobile. Just to our thousands of loyal listeners who are suffering now for your. That's a word to the wise. Don't order anything off of eBay. The Tennis Pod advice of the day. Well, speaking of the Tennis Pod, that's the fucking show we're doing right now in your ears live. Not a recording, we're live. And this is the show where one of us brings a top 10-ish list and the other tries to guess what's on that list without knowing ahead of time. And that's what we're going to do right now. And today, the list is brought to you by me. Oh, I think. And the guesser. <laughs> Are you about to do a mid-roll, like a sponsor ad? <laughs> Uh, it's sad that you can recognize that tone in my voice. I guess I need to work on that. It sounded like bullshit, yeah. Brandon, you're the guesser today, but before I tell you today's topic, mm -hmm. I want to ask you how you've been eating during this quarantine. You've been eating well? Uh, do you mean like eating healthy or eating well? <laughs> like well fed? However you want to take I it. I would say I've been eating weird. Everything's been at strange times and in strange amounts. But strange things. I've heard people saying that they're gaining like quarantine weight. And I will say, yes, I haven't. I've been eating weird stuff. I've been eating the wrong stuff, but I still seem to be the same weight and size. Well, that's a superpower you should bestow upon the rest of us. I think it's called stress and anxiety. I hear, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm closing my eyes and I'm sending out little, little dollops <laughs> of stress and anxiety to all of you. May you all wake up at Good. four o'clock in the morning and not be able to go back to sleep. So there you go. There's the official Tennis Pod weight loss program. Congratulations. Increase I've stress and anxiety. I've infected you all with, with mine. Okay. Well, why don't you... But yeah, I've been eating... Uh, we obviously been eating at home more, except, uh, you know, for like maybe DoorDash or what you're comfortable uh, maybe picking up from takeout or drive through But mostly we've been like picking stuff up because cause that's how we roll. That's how we roll here. Let me tell you this. I put this in a Twitter poll today. I'm going to ask you the same question and then I'll tell you mm -hmm. what our Twitter followers I saw the said. Twitter poll. You may have yeah. seen it. Taking money out of the equation. Yeah. 
would you rather eat a good meal at a restaurant uh -huh. or a home cooked meal? And it's a good meal in either case. Uh, well, I mean, without like you know being a pain in the butt and like <laughs> take take mm, too late, take, too late. <laughs> taking a simple question and and making it complicated. I guess it does depend on whose home cooked meal no, it is. No, no. But I said restaurant. Just a. I said restaurant because okay, of the well, variety just, just, and because yeah. the person making it, or at least the person who created the menu, supposedly a professional. Yeah, I'm with you. And the way I answer the poll is just the best restaurant meal you've ever had versus the best home cooked meal you've ever had. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose restaurant. And I also just think it just adds some variety to your day, Brandon. And our Twitter followers agree. 68% of our Twitter followers said they would rather eat a meal at a restaurant. 32% said home cooked. There's some things they can do at a restaurant that you cannot do at home. Like if you don't have a fucking wood fire grill or like a giant brick pizza oven, it's hard to replicate right. some of that stuff. And they don't have wait staff to yell at and make feel bad. <laughs> that makes your food taste better. You can follow us on Twitter, by the way, at Tennis Pod. And I w I'm asking you this question because today's episode, if you haven't figured it out by now, wh what would you guess today's episode's about, Brandon? Restaurants? I don't know. Food, food and sure. restaurants. We're going to be talking about the top 10 highest calorie restaurant meals. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to Waffle House. <laughs> Doesn't that sound fucking fun? Highest calorie. Okay. I, I'll admit, I can't guarantee this is the definitive list because I saw a lot of different versions of this list on a lot of high profile websites. So, I kind of just had to pick one that looked good. If you just heard what the top one was, you could make that and then like slap some more gravy on top and you would win. Yep. Well, <laughs> yes, there's that. <laughs> slap more gravy on top. I, I chose to go with an article from delish.com. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> We've used a lot of their scientific research before. Delish.com has a, a ranking of the top 10 highest calorie restaurant meals. Now, this is chains only, like national world or uh, worldwide chains. So it's not going to be like a, there could be menu items at a hole in the wall in your local town that has a higher calorie count. Okay. But these are regular menu items at chains that are globally available. Right. It's stuff we would all recognize or possibly. From what I recall, every item on here is out of the box, like without customization, except for one mm -hmm. big exception that I'll talk about. But for the most part, this is as is. And it's the meal. It's not just the main entree. Okay? Okay. So, if you were going to say a Big Mac, for example, that would be a Big Mac plus fries. You said it's the whole meal, not just... Okay. Yeah. Although, not the drink though. So, not to complicate it, but it's the meal minus the drink. <laughs> sure. You could always chug a gallon of sweet tea. Or water. Well, water has zero calories. <laughs> That's why I said sweet well, tea. Well, I know. I know. That was the just a, ju just a juxtaposition. No, just keep going. All right. What can you tell us about the human diet, Brandon? Not much. <laughs> it's fucking, it's a fragile thing. <laughs> what do you mean? You're supposed to have, oh, like how many calories are you supposed to have? Yeah, tell us. I think. You're the, a scientist, right? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I'm 38, I'm male, I'm six foot tall, I weigh like uh, 158 pounds. This is great. So I am supposed to eat 2,100 calories or maybe slightly less every day to stay like healthy or stay relatively healthy. And everybody's caloric expenditure is slightly different depending on like your age and size and your activity level and stuff. But probably everybody is somewhere between like, I don't know, 1,600 and 2,300 calories a day. That, like, I just became a nutritionist by saying that. Yeah, that's uh, it's a great radio the last few minutes here. I'll tell you that health.gov reports mm -hmm. estimates range from 1,600 to 2,400 per day for adult women, 2,000 to 3,000 for men. So basically, if you're a woman, 1,600 to 2,400, a lot of wiggle room there. And then for men, 2,000 to 3,000. So you're giant men, you're fucking Goliath sized men. Okay, maybe not Goliath, but like, your average-ish sized big fella, 3,000 would be your max. Isn't this fascinating? Aren't you guys glad you listened to the show today? Yeah, so you, I guess you're like setting the stage. God, I hope so. I'm setting the stage. <laughs> so let's just, after all that bullshit, your takeaway, 2,000 is the pretty standard uh, average that most people use. So we're going to use that today. And one last thing I'm going to do 
to set the stage is talk to you about a study done by Cornell University. Researchers conducted a randomized experiment and found that diners at full-service restaurants whose menus listed calories ordered meals with 3% fewer calories, about 45 calories or less than those who had menus without calorie information. What this is saying is the trend right now, it might even be the law in most countries. Yeah, they've got to put it on there. So even now, you go to McDonald's and next to the Big Mac, it'll tell you how many calories in the Big Mac on the menu right there while you're ordering. And this study is showing that restaurants that do that, the customer eats 45 less calories on average per meal. 45 less? That's... (laughs) They just like left a bite? But... I want you to know that those people that were under the study were not dissuaded by the fucking calorie counts on these menu items today. No. (laughs) I am setting the stage. Okay. Because these people were not dissuaded by these calorie counts. So why don't you give me a guess? And obviously, you know, you might be able to guess a few specific menu items, but if you can't, then just guess the chain, the restaurant, and then I'll tell you the item is. Okay. So you got the top 10 global chains with the highest calorie items on their menu. I feel like Cheesecake Factory's got to have something on there. Cheesecake Factory is the only one in the top 10 listed twice. Hmm. A very rare, prestigious distinction. Is there a Cheesecake Factory pasta dish on, in the top 10? There is, number six. I'll tell you about that in a minute, real quick. Cheesecake Factory is one of those places where, have you been there in the last few years? Yeah. Okay. It's one of those places where they have literally everything you could ever think of. They have steak, they have burgers, they have breakfast, brunch, <laughs> all, all they of have it, Asian all, food, pasta. All of it done. Eh, pretty okay. <laughs> pretty okay. I was going to ask you, do you prefer a restaurant that has a little bit of everything or a restaurant that specializes in something? Uh, I'd rather go to a restaurant that specializes in something. I feel like the yeah. more you do, the less you're going to do it well. Yeah, and dumb question factory, on my part. <laughs> Cheesecake Factory fucking nails that. They do a whole bunch of shit, just okay. Cheesecake Factory's pasta is number six. It is the pasta napolitana, right? Is that okay? I don't know. For every item on here, I have what's in it and then what it'll set you back. That's the calorie count, fat, etc. Mm-hmm. Again, this all comes from uh, delish.com. So the Cheesecake Factory pasta, tell me if this sounds healthy or unhealthy. Comes with butter, cream-flavored pasta, topped with Italian sausage, pepperoni, meatballs, and bacon. <laughs> a lot of nutrition there. Uh, it's called what, what would literally stick inside your heart? What kind of meats <laughs> would just form a little meatball inside your heart? <laughs> Maybe when they say there's meatballs in it, what they really mean is you're going to have meatballs in you. You're going to be a little meatball, yeah. you chunky little thing. Now, this one meal has 2,310 calories. <laughs> I mean, if, if you didn't eat all day and that's all you ate, I guess you could get away with it. You'd still be over. <laughs> uh, most people would still be over. You'd still need to go waddle around outside for a while. Yeah, that's the Cheesecake Factory Pasta Napoli- Napolitana. Napolitana. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not good at that shit. Uh, so, Cheesecake Factory number six with their pasta, but they have something else in the top ten. Are you the guy who goes to a restaurant and instead of saying pasta fajoule, it's like, I'll have the fagioli. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay. So there's another Cheesecake Factory one. I'm going to guess. What's the grossest thing you could get at a Cheesecake Factory? I'm, gonna, I'm fucking thinking seafood. No, no. seafood usually doesn't, isn't like high in calories. Grossest thing you could get at Cheesecake Factory. Something like a meat pie, like shepherd's pie. Mm, you're close. They do have shepherd's pie there. Yeah, that would be grosser probably. We're talking breakfast here. Oh, it's got to be pancakes. No, that's not that gross. Pancakes are fine. You can't, it's hard to screw up a pancake. No, I don't mean the pancakes would be gross. I mean the pancakes would be high in calorie. Oh, okay. Well, this is a breakfast burrito. Tell me about this burrito because now I want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. doesn't sound so bad, actually, now that I'm reading the ingredients, but okay. it's got scrambled eggs, bacon, chicken, chorizo, cheese, crispy potatoes, avocado, peppers, onions, with a side of sour cream and black beans. I just had to look it up while you were describing it. And uh, I guess the picture looks grosser. Holy shit. That, you're going to be set for the day. <laughs> you're going to be set for the week. 
But if you go, let's see, what time is brunch? 10.30? Let's say you go to brunch at 10.30 and you eat this. By 3.30 in the afternoon, you better be near not just the toilet, but your own <laughs> home toilet. I'm looking at the spicy ranchero sauce that this thing is hanging out in. And that means you've got about five hours to get your, <laughs> to get your ass to safe porcelain. <laughs> Plan your day around that. Mm -hmm. What number was that? That's three. Jesus. Cheesecake Factory breakfast burrito. And you know how bears have to like overeat before they hibernate to like sustain mm -hmm. themselves over many months? All a bear's got to do is eat one or two of these before they hibernate. They're set. Because this baby has 2,730 calories in the burrito. Holy shit. Remember, it's just a burrito with a side of beans. <laughs> That's over you know, 2,700 calories. If you were going to get up and like uh, have brunch and then go like work in a field all day, you could probably eat that and that would be okay. But I, there's I don't probably, know, man. There's probably not. No, no, no. How many people in the history world do you think have eaten brunch and then had to go work in a field? <laughs> Those are two <laughs> different lives. But think about it. If you're eating this thing, and let's say you eat every bite. Mm -hmm. Oh, God damn. It's making me sick just thinking about it. But then you go work in the field in the hot sun. That is a level of hell. You won't have like, to. Like that might be hell. You won't have to wait till 3.30. <laughs> no. Well, you might die before 3.30. You're going to have the screaming rancheros <laughs> by before lunch. Are you speaking from experience? If you eat that and then go work out like, I'm imagining like someone going to a brunch and eating that big breakfast burrito and drinking mimosas and then having to oh. put on like overalls and go like whip a donkey in a field <laughs> <laughs> in the hot sun. <laughs> Well, I don't know where you got off on this field thing, but... Well, I just thought, like, what would you, like, least, you know... You know, if you eat a big breakfast and you go, you're, like, on vacation or something or on a trip and you are going to walk all day, you know, that'd probably make you feel okay. bad. But what would be even worse than, like, you know, mm -hmm. having to work and be outside in the heat? And I thought, like, oh, man, being all sweaty working in a field. On our last Q&A episode, someone asked a question about Jesus microwaving a burrito. You remember that? Right, if could Jesus microwave a uh, burrito yeah. so hot, even he couldn't eat it. And I said, yeah, he could. He, I, he'd make one so hot that he wouldn't want to. I agreed with you. But imagine if for the Last Supper, he handed out a bunch of burrito <laughs> for his disciples. I don't know how many of them would have made it to the crucifixion the next well, day. <laughs> he would have had to change what he had associated his flesh and his blood with. He would have yeah. had to say, instead the of... blood is the ranchero sauce. The blood would have to be the spicy ranchero sauce. And I am mm -hmm. assuming he's going to just kind of lump the whole warm tortilla filled with scrambled eggs, bacon, chicken, chorizo, cheese, crispy potatoes, avocado, peppers, and onions. He would turn to Peter next to him and mm -hmm. say, Peter, take this. And each time you take a bite, you from now on, when you eat a warm tortilla filled with scrambled eggs, bacon, chicken, chorizo, cheese, crispy potatoes, avocado, peppers, and onions. Uh-huh. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my body. <laughs> and so now the communion plate at church is a bunch of full-size breakfast burritos. And they, they have, and have, they've put in a lot more bathrooms. <laughs> All right. Cheesecake Factory is the only in the top 10 listed more than once. So Cheesecake Factory is a bad offender. Action. That's what you came here for. You're always coming here looking for action. Well, guess what? There's no shortage of action going on at our exclusive partner, Bet Online. NASCAR is back, and Bet Online has hundreds of other games, events, and sports to get on. So you can bet on NASCAR, you can bet on all kinds of stuff. You can still bet on simulated NFL, NBA, and UFC events 24 7. Or you can participate in a $10,000 Madden Bracket Challenge. That's a March Madness style NFL simulation tournament that you can enter for free. And coming up next Sunday, Bet Online has ex Chicago Bulls Horace Grant, Bill Cartwright, and Craig Hodges joining them to discuss the Michael Jordan documentary on what they're calling After the Dance. Visit betonline.ag and use promo promo code don't use a promo code it won't work you have to use a promo code blue wire all one word blue wire to receive your new welcome bonus and check out all the action on betonline.ag bet online your online wagering solution why don't you give me another guess is the international house of pancakes represented on this list you have to know that it is I've been thinking about pancakes now. 
I like pancakes. Pancakes is the side here. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to guess then it like IHOP has some sort of maybe their version of the Denny's Grand Slam. It's like the IHOP fat fucker. (laughs) Oh my God. No, it's not that. Oh, it's not? Does it have, it's not called like the John Boy special? No, it's, this is combination of two popular American foods in one that makes a less than appealing, <laughs> less than appetizing to me, abomination. This is a meal that has pancakes on the side. Yeah. But it's not, it's... Uh, you want me to tell you? It's not the breakfast sampler? No. This is the cheeseburger omelet with pancakes. Okay. You hungry now? Well, now I have to, I'm, look, I'm looking up, I have to examine. Now that I know what it is, I have to look it up. This is eggs stuffed with cheeseburger patty pieces, hash browns, tomatoes, onions, American cheese, ketchup, mustard, pickles, and a side of buttered and syruped pancakes. You said cheeseburger? Omelet. Omelet. I'm not finding it, but it sounds... Maybe it's not on their menu anymore. It sounds absolutely disgusting. They, the omelets that they have now are... Spicy poblano omelet with a side of Pepto. Big steak omelet with a side of <laughs> Republican voters card. Uh, chicken fajita omelet. Uh, chicken fajita omelet, uh, which is probably what I would order and regret. Uh, the Colorado omelet. It's bacon, shredded beef, pork sausage, and ham with green peppers, onion, and cheddar. Then there's one called Bacon Temptation. Oh, baby. Uh, It's got a shitload of bacon on it. Spinach and mushroom. Hey, can I ask you about the bacon? Mm Mm-hmm. You know that bacon, a little less so now than like five years ago, but... People wouldn't shut the fuck up about bacon. Yeah, that was a new thing, right? Because I don't remember bacon being this... I mean, of course, people have always loved bacon, but I don't remember it being this thing where like you put bacon on everything when I was a kid. No, it's... I think when people got on the internet and people were, had like become comfortable sharing their stupid opinions, people were like, I really love fucking bacon. And everyone else was like, high five, hell yeah, we love bacon. It's like, of course mm-hmm. you do. Everybody, everybody who eats meat enjoys bacon because it's fucking salty and delicious. But then it becomes like an internet meme and then you don't want to ever see or eat bacon again. The internet, fuck the internet. What's it ever done for us besides cause us problems? Brandon, mm-hmm. you mentioned the Republican voters card. I'll bet you there's an interesting study out there. Maybe, maybe Purdue University, who did the licking machine experiment, this might be the next one for them. They need to do a study to see the correlation between people who would order the IHOP cheeseburger omelet and Republican voters, because I'll bet the correlation's pretty strong. This was the big steak omelet. I think that one too. When I think steak, I think Mm -hmm. International House of Pancakes. Yep. Well, the cheeseburger version of that omelet, Mm -hmm. quote, eggs stuffed with cheeseburger patty pieces uh, will set you back 1,990 calories. Holy shit. Yeah, you'll get your whole day's worth there or more than that if you're a young lady, perhaps. That is number nine in the top 10, the IHOP cheeseburger omelet with pancakes. It makes me... And I gotta tell you, if you can eat the entire omelet and the entire side of pancakes, I want to shake your hand because that's, that's a feat. I feel like if I ate all that, I'd be able to feel my heart beating in my neck without using my hands. Mm-hmm. My blood pressure would immediately... I would pop. I would be ready to pop. <laughs> uh... I see this has mushrooms on it. Fucking... Look, I like a lot of foods. I'm pretty fucking freewheeling with what kind of foods I'll eat and try. Uh-huh. But you guys need to get over mushrooms. Mushrooms suck. Sorry. Forget about mushrooms, everybody. They're stupid. Hot take of the day. Mushrooms are stupid. Get over yourself. They're slimy. It's a fucking fungus. Yeah. I feel the same way about cottage cheese, by the way. I Not feel that the it's same. a fungus. Yeah, because it's... Cottage it's, cheese is spoiled milk. It's old, chunky milk. Yes, I hate cottage cheese, too. I think this is, these are like the only things we agree on. Cottage cheese yeah. blows ass. There's a place. Are we friends now? <laughs> there's a place, uh, you know, Freddy's. Uh-huh. There's a cheeseburger place that makes good concrete ice creams. 
in the area that Nick and I live in, and Freddy's serves a, you can get a side of fried cheese curds. Nope. If, I don't know, I just don't understand, like, if you got regular milk, you got regular cheese, why are you waiting for them to go bad so you can see what else they become and eat it? <laughs> I know, I know. Just eat it while it's still fine. Yes. Thank you. We're friends now. I want you to know that you mentioned the cheese curds. Oh. I have an honorable mention just outside the top 10. The okay. Buffalo Wild Wings Cheese Curd Bacon Burger. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> And the burger by itself, not including the fries, is 1950 calories. 1,950 calories. I think I'm going to make a lot of enemies in this episode. I'm going to sound like a big snob, but Buffalo Wild Wings blows ass too. Whoa, whoa. I just heard the hang up of about 40% of our listeners. They don't have good wings. Their wings are... That's too hot of a take, Brandon. Their wings are tiny, shrimpy little things that don't have good tasting wing sauce on them. Those are hot. That's a hot take with the tongue torch sauce. My favorite wing place in Tulsa closed down. They only had one. They weren't a chain. So now I have to go to a chain. And if you have a wing stop near you, wing stop has the best wings for any chain restaurant. And that's something we disagree on. I remember I went to a wing place with you once. And you cried. I get them boneless. I get them boneless. And I slapped you. Yeah, well, I get them as hot as they come, though. Oh, but, yeah, uh, I can't do that. Yeah, so that's where we differ. I'll get them as hot as I come, but they got to be boneless because I'm not a fucking caveman that wants to use up 40,000 napkins per wing. You know, I used to, I, I used to be vehemently opposed to boneless wings because... Because you're an asshole? Well, yeah, no, they do taste like better, like a regular wing. However, they destroy between your teeth when you're pulling that off uh like every time i eat it i cannot eat wings outside of the house because i immediately am like frantically looking to brush and floss because of all the crazy little meat things that get hung up in there oh god imagine never mind what well, spending your whole day with meat things stuck in your teeth <laughs> makes me i cannot even sit still if i think about it if i get creepy crawlies all over my body well, I have to think that most of the vegetarians in the world, and maybe the vegans too, they mm -hmm. probably became that after watching someone tear the chicken meat off the <laughs> hot wings. That was probably the last straw for all of them. Or even afterwards, they just stood close to them and talked and saw <laughs> like uh, sinewy uh -huh. chicken bits uh, stuck between their teeth. Yeah. Who knew that today's episode would be so tummy turning for so many of us? We're supposed to be talking about f food and I think we're both just really grossed out by food. So you don't want the cheese curd bacon burger at Buffalo Wild Wings? Mm -mm. How about the 40 piece chicken McNugget at McDonald's? <laughs> Is that in the top 10? No, it's th these are honorable mentions. 40 piece nuggets. I didn't even know they went up that high. I had heard about the 20. Yeah, this is 1,880 calories, not including any fries for your 40 piece nuggets. Now, I got to tell you, McDonald's McNuggets for one thing. Uh huh. McDonald's is a mixed bag for sure. Right. I have mixed feelings about McDonald's. However, I just keep eating it. <laughs> the chicken nuggets, man. It's one of those things where if you put 20 nuggets in front of me, it'll be hard for me to not eat all 20 because... Yeah, I guess I'm going to eat these 20 nuggets now. Fuck you. Yeah. It's like a goldfish. However big his bowl is, is how big he's going to grow. So however exactly. many nuggets they put in front of you, I will say sometimes I'll get the 10 nuggets and even mm. 10 can be kind of a lot because by the end, I'll look down and I'll be like, fuck, there's still two more of you guys. But then I just <laughs> eat them anyway. You eat them anyway. Exactly. <laughs> I, whatever I look down and see, it's, I just kind of shrug and go like, I guess that's what I'm going to eat the rest of. <laughs> Someone could kill me that way. If someone snuck up behind me with a bunch of McDonald's <laughs> and every time I looked away, they put a little bit more down in front of me, I would just, I would eat until I burst. Every time I looked down, I'm like, oh, fuck, I guess I got seven more nuggets. I don't know how that, how did I get more than 10? This sounds like a storyline that was probably pitched for Kevin Malone in the office. <laughs> Doesn't that seem like something he'd do? But he never got tired of it. <laughs> He just kept going forever and they finally ran out of nuggets. Well, there was an episode of The Simpsons where Homer gets sent to hell. And they try to give him donuts until he dies. Like until he, they're like, oh, you like donuts, huh? Well, how about all the donuts in the world? And this machine holds Homer's mouth open 
and then shovels donuts in and he just eats mm-hmm. and eats and eats and eats until the machine runs out of donuts and the devil's like, oh, fuck, what do we do now? <laughs> All right, I have one more honorable mention for you. Tell me mm-hmm. if you think this would be better or worse for your bowels than the, than the breakfast burrito at Cheesecake Factory. This is Applebee's. Our friends at Applebee's, listeners of the show. Worse. This is the four cheese mac and cheese with honey pepper chicken tenders on top, like full size tenders on top of the four cheese mac and cheese. It wouldn't hurt my tummy in the same way, but it would hurt it in a different way. Aren't you lactose intolerant? Mm, All that cheese, I thought, no, would give you I could trouble. do macaroni and cheese. It's more like just whole milk. Like if I drank a glass of whole milk, that would be bad. We don't want to hear any more about it. Might as well drink uh, fucking bleach. Now, the other one that gets me. It gets me good. <laughs> Tell us. It's ranch. Certain types of creamier ranch. Locally, the pizza, uh, the pizza place, Mazio's. Mazio's has very thick ranch. And it, if you could not have made something in a lab that was more dangerous to me. But you eat it anyway, don't while you? While still being, yeah. <laughs> See, by the way, I'm only going to say this once and then I'm not going to mention it again in this episode, <laughs> but Exhibit A was right what Brandon just said. For why he ate that fucking hot dog at no, the I airport. No, I did not eat. Because but there's no, a difference. Because... I like the taste of ranch. I do not like the taste of hot dogs. Okay. Yeah. We'll let the listeners decide. But <laughs> we won't let the listeners decide because they don't know the fucking truth. <laughs> they do. All they gotta do is listen to you for thirty seconds in any episode, and they'll know the truth. No. Now you eat ranch with your pizza like a jackass. Sometimes, not all okay. the time. Okay. You're ruining your pizza, people. If you dip it in ranch. Let's get back to the top ten. We're on the pizza front here now. I mentioned the IHOP cheeseburger omelet was a combination of two of America's favorite foods. Oh, I, I know. another thing in that vein. There's got to be something at Pizza Hut where it's like a pizza sandwich. They make a pizza no. out of other pizzas. No, I, I, I've seen what you're talking about, but that's not in here. Okay. You know of this chain, but I don't think you'll mention it. It's not the first thing you think of when you hear pizza. Case of pizza? Well, yeah. I mean, that's essentially what it is. It's Dave & Buster's Carnivore Pizza Dia. I realize I didn't guess Dave and Buster's, but can you give it up to me a little bit for combining pizza and knowing that it was going to be used to make a quesadilla? No, because there's only so many things you can do with a pizza. What were you going to say? A, a pizza sundae? Pizza glory hole. <laughs> oh, fuck. Now, don't knock those until you try it. Am I right? This is the Dave and Buster's Carnivore Pizza Dia. It's number 10. Do you want me to tell you about this pizza? Yes. This is, a, this is a quote from Delish.com. A giant quesadilla stuffed with manchigo and cheddar cheese, pepperoni and Italian sausage, and then smothered in more cheese, pepperoni, and sausage. It's also got bacon and marinara sauce. <laughs> now, other than the fact that it's just too much, it does sound kind of good. It's essentially a pizza wrapped in a quesadilla. This is 1970 on the calorie count, 1,970, which actually sounds kind of low for this thing. I was trying to find it on their menu. It must not be on there anymore. It might have been a special, not like a regular menu item. They might have gotten fucking scared (laughs) that they were going to kill somebody. (laughs) And said, maybe they did. Pull it. Yeah. Now, how about instead of a pizza inside of a quesadilla, you do a, a quesadilla that has pizza insides? right? So it's cheese and pepperoni and stuff inside of a tortilla without a pizza inside, like no pizza crust and all that. I think I would be more likely to order that than this shit that I've seen a hundred different times. Yeah, same. Um, Okay, so you have 10, the pizza dia, 9, the IHOP cheeseburger omelet with pancakes, 6, the Cheesecake Factory pasta, 3, the Cheesecake Factory breakfast burrito. Oh, Olive Garden's got to be on here somewhere. It's not. Hmm. Is there another Applebee's? No. Man, you're really bad at guessing. You are really, really bad at guessing. Jesus, this is embarrassing. God. Is Taco Bell in the top 10? No. Kind of surprising, isn't it? Is there anything from McDonald's in the top 10? No. Fast food places, I would think, have a hard time cracking the top 10 because you have to put so much food into the Mm -hmm. meal to do that. I would say there's two, what most people would call fast food, two in the top 10 that you had not guessed. Hmm. And there's one that's kind of in the middle. Is Denny's in the top 10? 
No, that's a good thought. Good guess. I'm with you on that. Do you need a hint? No, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, let's see. I'm having trouble coming up with chain restaurants. Yeah, I can imagine why it's so hard. There's only 70 million. Yeah, but I don't ever, like, I don't know. I don't ever go to them. I don't, they aren't, like, very top of mind to me. I, you drive I have, past them every day. I don't drive well, anywhere later. or anywhere. I don't do yeah. fucking anything. Okay. There's no more pizza in the top 10. You got a couple of burgers. Okay, what well, I'll tell hold, you hold a hint on, let me, let me let me uh let me look let me think here cuz I now I've got a grand list of restaurant chains in front of me. Oh. Is there a Chili's or Outback on there cuz I think I think at least one of them has something real fucked up on the menu I've heard about. <laughs> real fucked up. <laughs> Outback. Outback is in here, not Chili's. Outback is number 5. I know the Bloom and Onion is yeah. Is it the Bloomin' Onion? No, no. It's not a meal, right? It's not an entree. The Bloomin' Onion is not a meal. Many of Bloomin' Onions have come under fire for high calorie counts, sometimes over going over 1,500 calories. Oh, well, this, this puts that to shame. You know, like an onion, an entire onion probably has like 20 total calories. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's all the other shit on top of it. They're good, though. Something in Outback. Um, it's a prime rib. It's an herb roasted prime rib. How is a prime... Oh, t- explain to me how this prime rib racks up so many calories. Let me explain to the folks at home. This is what's in it. The meat plus a dressed baked potato. Okay. That's a lot of it. And yeah. blue cheese wedge side salad. Uh, as well as a half a loaf of free bread with butter. And they're basing that off... <laughs> They're basing that off what the average Outback customer eats of the free bread. Right. So, all that combined, the bread and butter has got to be a big chunk of this. 2,400 calories. Man, nothing gets your stomach ready to eat, you know, an appetizer. (laughs) Like bread. (laughs) Yeah, an appetizer, blue cheese wedge salad, a big old prime rib with a loaded baked potato like a fucking loaf of bread. With butter. And, you know, I got to tell you, if I was sitting in an Outback right now, I'd be eating the bread. I love... When restaurants give you bread first. But you're right, it ends up ruining your meal before... (laughs) It's a sucker's bet, man. Where did this originate? Where did bread before a meal come from? Like, shouldn't we be eating... Nothing. You should just eat the meal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but now it's like one of those things that's expected. The blue cheese has got to be part of it. Yeah, blue cheese is a lot of it. So, you got a dressed baked potato. And keep in mind, that's going to include butter, sour cream, cheese, bacon. Oh, blue cheese has mold in it. Yeah. Just saying. It's another fucking gross one. I like a blue cheese wedge. I got to admit it. And then half a loaf of bread with butter. So the herb roasted prime rib, the the calling card, the star of the show here, the menu item listing item, the prime rib is probably the lowest calorie thing on this. Yeah. But altogether, 2,400 calories, it's at number five. That's good news for you folks who like meat out there is you can usually eat pretty good amount of meat it's not <laughs> fried or anything a couple of hot dogs worth no not hot dogs aren't meat <laughs> that's part of the problem you know but even fried meat like you know i assume you mean like chicken and stuff if you just ate that without the sides and you ate a reasonable amount of that only even that's not that bad not as bad not as bad right as like a burger or something and what number was that now that's five is the fucking Captain's Feast at Red Lobster on the, li- on the list? Maybe it goes by that name. I, I don't have that. That's not what I have it called here, but I could see it being called that. Hold on. Maybe it wasn't called the Captain's Feast. Hold on. Well, I it's... Have... Okay. I, I want to look it up now. Because I... basically you're saying Red Lobster's got a meal that's on here. Oh, it's the Ultimate Feast. Is it called the Ultimate Feast? It's called Create Your Own Combination. And what oh. they did is they took, the, they took the highest possible combination of items. Gotcha. And it's number one with 3,600 calories. <laughs> what did they choose to put on it that made it so... Here's what it is. Red Lobster Create Your Own Combination. They have three shrimp dishes, which is Parrot Isle, Jumbo Coconut, Walt's Favorite, and Linguini Alfredo, plus French fries, Caesar salad, and a Cheddar Bay biscuit with a 24-ounce lobsterita. Holy what is a shit. lobsterita? It actually is that does a market? 
Is that a margarita with like oh, lobster? Oh, they in took. It? So what they did was they no they the create your own combo. All they did was recreate the seaside shrimp trio. Okay. It's a generous sample. A generous sampling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. The seaside shrimp <laughs> trio is a generous uh, sampling of Walt's favorite shrimp, handcrafted garlic shrimp scampi, and creamy shrimp linguine alfredo, served with choice of two sides. And so then for the sides, they picked fries, and what was the other one? Caesar salad. Well, they could have made it even worse if they picked, like, I don't know, more fries. <laughs> I guess that's true. That, that, that was kind of cheating, I think. No, I, right next to the Seaside Shrimp Trio is the last, like, I haven't been to Red Lobster in a long time, but the last time I went is this one that's located right next to it. It's titled The Ultimate Feast. <laughs> 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 and let me tell you how many uh, calories are in The Ultimate Feast. Oh my God, there's so many that when I clicked on it, it was a 404 page error. They don't want you to know. No. <laughs> well, this one alone has 3,600 calories. That's basically, for some people, that's two days worth of calories almost in this one meal. And it only is one Cheddar Bay biscuit. And I got to tell you, if I'm going to Red Lobster, I'm eating five or six of those some bitches. And a lobsterita sounds fucking disgusting. I don't know what it is. But yeah, that's number one. I googled the um, ultimate feast. I'll bet you did. And someone has entered it into my fitness pal, which is fucking <laughs> amazing. Someone was, someone was going through all the trouble to like track their health and their eating habits on my fitness pal, and they're like, "I'm gonna get the ultimate feast," but I'm still concerned about my health, so I'm gonna <laughs> put it in here and uh, a 1,120 calories. So it's okay, can so even crack like the a... top ten. No. Maybe that was a bear getting ready for hibernation that entered that. This has a lot of shit that bears would like in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fucking weirdest thing you've ever said on the show. <laughs> I, I loved it. All right. That's number one. So you just need two, four, seven, and eight. Okay. And one of these, I would say, even though it's not number one, I think it's the most impressive in the top 10 because everything we've mentioned so far has been a full meal. Came with an entree, a side, sometimes multiple sides, sometimes an appetizer. Uh -huh. This, number eight, is just one item and it's a dessert. And it by itself cracked the top ten and it's a fast food dessert. A fast food dessert. Okay. I'm going to say it's not McDonald's. They're no. fa fast food desserts are kind of small. There's a local flair to this. I mean, it's a, it's a global chain, maybe national in America. I don't know if it's global, but... It has its roots in Oklahoma, where we live. Okay, it's from Sonic? Yep. It's got to be like a flurry that has fucking candy in it or syrup or something. It's the damnedest thing. It's a pineapple upside down master blast shake. <laughs> master blast. <laughs> you assholes. Can't you just name it like pineapple upside down shake? What is, what's with the master blast part? I was going to ask you, Brandon, how many times per day do you master blast? If I ate that uh, breakfast burrito, I told you, 10.30 yep. brunch, uh, <laughs> master blast them before 3.30. <laughs> no. The Sonic Pineapple Upside Down Master Blast Shake is number eight. Again, I want to reiterate. Think of uh, Number nine is the IHOP Cheeseburger Omelet with a full stack of pancakes. Number 10 is the Pizza Dia. Uh, all these other things have sides and shit. This is just one shake. <laughs> it's vanilla ice cream mixed with pineapple. Salted caramel and pie crust pieces. Oh. Sounds kind of good. But the pie crust has got to be the main driver there. How do you get the pie crust up to straw? 2,000 calories. 2,020 calories. So there's your whole day in one shake. That would be my whole night if I ate that. Brandon, yeah, he's lactose intolerant, but... I mean, is anybody tolerant of a fucking master blaster upside down <laughs> cake shake? <laughs> Do you like sex? This message is from my bros out there, so I'm gonna need you chicks to plug your ears. 
Guys, if you're looking to last longer and go a few extra rounds, got to get to BlueChew.com. BlueChew.com has the first ever chewable that brings your performance in the bedroom to another level. They've got the same active ingredients that are in Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. And since they're chewable, they work faster. You can take them anytime, day or night, and you can even take them on a full stomach. Plus, you don't need to go to the doctor's office or spend time waiting in that pharmacy line. Blue Chew's online physician is free of cost and once approved your order ships straight to your door in discreet packaging and here's a great deal visit bluechew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code blue wire just pay five dollars shipping and they're yours again go to blue chew.com and use the promo code blue wire blue chew so you need two four and seven and one of these has the word meat in the title. Hmm. Meat normous. Is it something meat normous? That's a, that's a very good guess, Brandon, but no. Is there anything from Arby's? No. There's one more, I think what most people would agree is a fast food place. And it's not local here. We don't have one here. But you've been there. I went there with you before. Is it in and out Burger or? No, you're on the right path though. Del Taco? No. <laughs> Taco Tico? What was that taco place? It's not Taco. Oh, um, Shake Shack? Yeah, Shake Shack. Number seven. What does Shake Shack have? This is the Double Smoke Shack Burger, but this is kind of cheating because they added some sides in here. I don't know. <laughs> they added a side of a uh, can of Crisco. <laughs> this thing comes with a double patty with bacon, cherry pepper, and shake sauce on top. I love Shake Shack. Of fast food places, maybe my favorite burger. But it comes with a side of fries and a peanut butter shake. Now, I don't know why they added the shake on here, but... They must have run out of water to put in that shake. It'll put you at 2,240 calories, number seven in the top ten. You like Shake Shack, right? Yeah. Yeah, the burger itself is only eight... I mean, only. <laughs> is 870 calories. For fast food burger, that's not that bad. I guess it is kind of bad. The Big Mac is like only 600 or something. I'm going to go and say that that sounds like a lot to handle. Yep. What the fuck is shack sauce? It's like their secret sauce. Shack sauce sounds like uh, what you get on Shaquille O'Neal's towel. After that sounds like what Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> uh, implants you with, his shack sauce. Hmm. All right? Too vulgar? Too much? It make you grow to like unbelievable proportions yeah and put you in a lifetime of ads for fucking men's lotion uh he's, he's also, in those gold bond commercials i mean his skin looks like it's uh yeah great for him good for him yeah, i'm not moist very moist skin okay so that was number seven shake shack you need two and four so far the theme is a lot of either meat or dairy well what else do you fucking get at a restaurant salad well I mean, you wouldn't make this list if you did. You'd probably live longer. Is there anything from Chipotle? No. How about Five Guys? No, that, I would have guessed that. Mm, maybe Five Guys is my favorite fast food burger. Mm. You said it said uh, meat? Yes, there's something on here with meat in the name. Uh, let's see. Is it from Whataburger? No. This is not... I, Actually, I've never been here. I don't think it's fast food. I think it's kind of a sit-down place. Hmm. Well, when I say sit-down, you know, I don't mean like fucking Ritz-Carlton or something. I just mean... Would you have a waiter or waitress? Would you, would, there, would you be waited upon? That's what I think, but I haven't been inside, so I don't really know. But I, that, that was what I assumed. Do they have them here? I've seen one here, yeah. Hooters? No. Yeah, you could probably tell us Hooters menu front and back, couldn't you? I haven't been in there in a long time. I've probably more than like 12 years. Their wings weren't very fucking good either. Long John Silvers? No. Fucking Grandies? No. Is there a Grandies here? No. The last Grandies I knew of was when I was in college. In Norman, Oklahoma, they had one Grandies. And we'd always dared each other to go eat at Grandies. But nobody ever did. And now it's well, gone. I hope the owner of Grandies is not listening right now because you just fucking <laughs> hurt their feelings. So I'm going to kill myself. Um, I think Grandy's disappeared a while back. Okay, this is a barbecue joint. It's a barbecue place? It's Dickie's Barbecue Pit. Have you been there? 
Uh, not in a long time. They're gross. Do you have a waiter or do you go up to a counter? If I remember right, you go up to a counter and then you... I could be wrong, but I haven't been in Dickies in like, holy shit, probably like 20 years. Yeah, well, now we're going to get some angry tweets saying that we were wrong. Fuck you, I love Dickies, you asshole, and they have waiters all over the place. (laughs) They have waiters up the (laughs) yin-yang. Dickies barbecue pit, three meat plate. It has Polish sausage, pork ribs, beef brisket, fried onion tanglers, whatever the fuck (laughs) that is, and... Get your hands out of my pants, you're going to grab my tanglers. Mac and cheese with an ice cream cone for dessert. I want you to, and it's 2,500 calories. Think about everything I just said. Whole sausage, pork ribs, beef brisket, fried onion tanglers, mac and cheese, ice cream cone for dessert, and it's only 280 calories more than that shake at Sonic. Jesus Christ. Uh, So that's number four, the three meat plate. How many meats do you like to have on your plate at once, Brandon? Well, when you started talking about it, I felt bad because there's a local barbecue place. <laughs> and the last time I ordered from there, I got a three meat combo. Yeah. And but I didn't top it off with an ice cream cone and a bunch of other fried shit. Yeah. So I was healthy. If you're listening and you can eat all this shit, more power to you. That's fine. You do, yeah, what, I don't you care. do what's best for you. Hey, guess what, folks? Whatever you've eaten, I've probably eaten worse at some point. So yep. who am I? Yeah. If, if you don't, if. Yeah, fuck me. Fuck Brandon. Just yeah. keep listening to the show. That's the most important thing. You can buy an, a, a whole smoked brisket at Dickie's. Did you know that? I didn't, Brandon. I think somebody could sit down and eat. I think <laughs> someone could eat that whole brisket. I, I went to a place in Texas. It's famous, so maybe you've heard of it. Some of our listeners may have, but there's a place near the... Uh, where is it? Amarillo, maybe? Something like that? Amarillo? Uh, there's, a te- there's a... Amarillo. There's a steak place where it's like, I, th- I want to say 72 ounces. And if you eat the whole steak, you like, you know, you get your name on the wall or your picture on the wall. That, that shit. is an Amarillo. Could you eat a 72 ounce steak? Like if you were motivated to do it? Mm, no. There might have been a time where I could have trained to do it. How do these like professional food eaters like Kobayashi and shit? There is a scientific do- reason. Kobayashi, and I think his father had it too. He actually has like a physical difference in something in his stomach that allows there to be more room there. I mean, you could call it a mutation. (laughs) Mutation makes it sound way cooler, like he's a fucking ninja turtle. He's not, but he is able to do something with his stomach that allows him to have like basically more storage space in it. That seems unfair for him to compete against people that don't have that same advantage, but... If you're a basketball player, it's just like being born tall or being born like more athletic. Everyone else you're playing against is also tall for the most part. I guess all all those other people should have uh, some kind of surgery on their stomach to keep up with them. This has been a productive last few minutes. Why don't you guess the last one on here? It's number two. Hmm. What kind of food is it? It's a burger. Smash burger. No. Uh, Whataburger? No. I like guessing burgers, so this could go on a while. (laughs) Okay. It's not a Freddy's steak burger. Nope. I gotta think of a big, big burger. And it's not a Red Robin burger. No, it's 3,500 calories. Motherfucker. It's ju- just the burger or the meal? I would have thought the meal, but when I'm reading this, it only has the burger listed. Wait, is it fucking Fuddruckers? <laughs> no. Did they name that place just so you would think buttfuckers every time you drove by? <laughs> Was that the whole purpose behind it? And no one will ever forget this stupid ass name. It sounds like buttfuckers. There you go. That's got to be the reason, right? It's a memorable name. And it's also someone's name. Oh, is it? I assume. Oh, Johan Fuddrucker, <laughs> the guy who Jack invented the cheeseburger. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. Okay, this is Johnny Rockets. Oh, I have, a, have not been to it. It's Johnny Rockets. It's only a double burger, bacon cheddar double burger. And it's got 3,500 calories. What? Applewood smoked bacon, cheddar cheese, crisp leaf lettuce, fresh tomato, sliced onion, and a special sauce on double patties. What was the name of it again? The bacon cheddar double burger. Yeah, it's number two, 3,500 calories. I did some uh, math here. I found that in the top 10, we had one pizza, one pasta, one dessert, one seafood dish, one barbecue dish, one steak, and then we had two breakfasts, two burgers. 
And I wanted to ask you, if you had to sit down and watch a stranger... Oh, no. Take their time eating any one of these from beginning to end. And the, pro- the risk here is it's a stranger. You don't know if they're going to eat slow. You don't know if they're going to eat fast. You don't know if they're going to eat disgustingly. Do I know what the stranger looks like? No. Oh. You, you're taking a blind gamble here. Which of these foods is the last you'd choose to watch someone else eat? Oh, the last. I was going to say first I would choose is the shake. Yeah, same. Hmm. The breakfast burrito would be rough, as well as the carnivore pizza dia. Yeah. And the cheeseburger omelet all come to mind for me. Oh, and you know, the three meat plate of Dickies because... In addition, fucking three meats. You also got fried onion tanglers, mac and cheese, and ice cream. I think that's the one that would be hardest for me to watch. Although I would say, if it turns out the stranger is, and I'm sorry to all of our elderly listeners, if it turns out that the stranger is elderly, <laughs> any one of these becomes a nightmare for me to watch. I am, <laughs> I kind of have a thing, and by thing, I mean like, an irrational fear. I'm completely disgusted by old people's mouths, especially when they're eating. And I know, yeah, fuck me for not liking old people's mouths. When I'm old, I'll hate my own mouth. If you're old, just unsubscribe from the show. But How's that? Watching old people's mouths when they eat is really difficult. Yeah. And I think the worst one on here to watch an old person eat would be the top one on the list. The Red Lobster create your own combo with those three different types of shrimp. Watching their old lips that have lost their elasticity wrap around a shrimp Mm -hmm. and then yank it off of its little (laughs) shrimp tail and then like smack it around. No, thank (laughs) you. you. In the honorable mentions, you have the cheese curd bacon burger. That would be a rough one to watch an old person eat as well. And, you know, just from a take out the disgust factor, just from a time perspective, how long it would take to sit there and just watch someone eat the three meat plate. So let me ask you the reverse now. Say you're George in Seinfeld Mm -hmm. and you're trying to bring food into into the bedroom. There's an episode of Seinfeld where George is infatuated with the idea of bringing food in the bedroom and he starts with, you know, chocolate syrup and strawberries and then he graduates to a... (laughs) A sandwich. Yeah, but wasn't it a pastrami on... (laughs) Yeah, it was was not a sexy sandwich. (laughs) It wasn't um, like a lingerie in bed sandwich. It wasn't even a cocktail dress on the night on the town sandwich, it was a sweatpants on the couch sandwich. (laughs) Okay, so let's say you are trying to bring one of these foods into the bedroom. Which one do you do? And let's take the shake out of it because that would be everyone's choice. I think there's a way you could feed those, uh, all those weird little meats in that Cheesecake Factory pasta. You could probably feed those to someone sensually. (laughs) (laughs) The shrimp might work for that too. Yeah. Would you like to be in bed with the carnivore pizza dia and remember when you're in bed you're you're naked and you're doing it you're not just laying in bed eating it i feel like this is a like these are a lot of opportunities to get hot grease on yourself (laughs) and by on yourself you of course mean on yourself right Mm -hmm. and i think breakfast burrito is dead last okay let me go back through the top 10 these are the highest calorie restaurant meals number 10 dave and buster's carnivore pizza dia number nine ihop cheeseburger omelet with pancakes, because the omelet's not enough. Number eight, Sonic Pineapple Upside Down Masturbate Shake. Number seven, the Shake Shack Double Smoke Shack Burger. Number six, the Cheesecake Factory Pasta Napl- Napolitana. Napolitana. Napolitano. Uh, number five, Outback Steakhouse, the Herb Roasted Prime Rib. Number four, Dickie's Barbecue Pit with the three meat plate. Number three, Cheesecake Factory Breakfast Burrito. Number two, Johnny Rockets Bacon Cheddar Double Burger. And number one, at 3,600 calories, the Red Lobster Create Your Own Combo with three shrimp dishes with French fries, Caesar salad, Cheddar Bay Biscuit, and a 24-ounce Lobsterita. I think you... Ooh. Oh, I didn't know it came with a Lobsterita. I mentioned it earlier. Don't drink anything with the word lobster in it. That's a really strange take, Brandon. I'm surprised you'd say that. That's a really a shitty name for a drink. I don't know. Our yep. name's Red Lobster. Do you want to think about lobster when you're drinking something? Sure. Let's name it that. I was wondering if there's actually lobster in it somehow. <sighs> Do you think? I mean, they put bacon no. in a sundae, so I don't know. <laughs> Surely not. You, well, please don't call me Shirley. That's the top 10 highest calorie restaurant meals. Are you hungry now, everyone? You ready to eat? You ready to go have a big old meal? Well-balanced, nutritious meal? 
this has inspired me to take a walk. <laughs> yeah. I hope if we could do anything today, we're here to educate you. We're here to edutain you. We're here to let you know about your options at restaurants. We're here to let you, uh, to inspire you to take a walk. When you're taking your walk, be sure to continue listening to us. You can find all of our past episodes at tannishpod.com. I already mentioned you can follow us on Twitter, but you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at 10ISHPOD. We'll be back next week with episode 87. Brandon will have the list, I hope, right? Yep. You have any teasers for us? No. <laughs> okay. Great. I got a teaser for you. If anyone out there has an idea for a list and you've already done all the work, send it to me. All right. And my very last plug here for general ideas and feedback and ways for us to improve, go to tennispod.com slash survey. Literally takes two minutes or less to do that. Shout out to Jerry Stiller. God, we should have opened with that. Jerry Stiller, yeah. also known as Frank Costanza. He's also uh, Arthur Spooner in King of Queens. Ben Stiller's father, he's in a bunch of movies, like 70 years of career. Super bummed about it. Absolute best side character on Seinfeld. Yeah, he's the fifth best character in the show. And the only four better than him are the main four. Jerry Stiller was a scene stealer. That's hard to difficult to say. That is, but yeah, Thank every you. time he every time he is on, like you only paid attention to him because he's funny. I was more bummed and depressed about Jerry Stiller's passing than I was many of my own family <laughs> passing. I really bummed about it. Not that not that he didn't live a full good life. He's ninety two, so I mean, let's keep that in mind. However, selfishly wish they'd gotten that damn reunion done while he was alive. But now I don't even care. I'm like, don't ever do the reunion now. It's fine. <laughs> There's a. So I just Googled him just to look at his pictures. And every one of these pictures starts to make me laugh too. He has like, <laughs> he has like the world's best smile, but one of them, he's making the okay sign. It's just him smiling and making that, <laughs> making that sign and it fucking made me laugh. Yeah. He that's was the man, talent. Jerry Stiller. Yeah. All right. Well, on that somber note, rest in peace, Jerry Stiller. He was a listener of the show. He is a tennis patron. I'll make sure that. Uh, his son, Ben, can uh, continue to pick up the tab for that Patreon subscription. <laughs> you're not going to discontinue. You're just going to transfer ownership of the <laughs> subscription. Ben can afford the three bucks a month. And think of all the content he's getting, Brandon. Yeah, do another night at the museum if you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We appreciate you listening. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thanks. I'd like to thank Kevin McLeod for his song Hackbeat, which we found on Incompetech.com for the official Tennis Podcast theme.